questions, a lot of issues from the time of the Buddha, where people would insist it must be this way or that way, it must be either one or the other. And the Buddha's answer was, neither. The question was poorly framed. It led nowhere. Then he would provide a new answer that basically essentially rephrased the question. This pattern started with his very first talk. He taught a path that led between the extremes of self-indulgence and self-torture. And although we tend to think of the question, issues of self-indulgence and self-torture as physical issues, they're also mental. And we have to recognize that our practice tries to find a middle way between those two mental extremes. People, the issue is, should I learn to accept myself or should I reject myself? And the psychologists all, all say, well, you should learn to accept yourself. Well, those are two extremes. And we recognize them as extremes when we start looking at behavior. There are some people who really should be dissatisfied with themselves because of the way they behave. And then, of course, other people too, who are too hard on themselves. Their behavior is perfectly okay, but they tie themselves up in knots with unrealistic expectations, unrealistic standards, and beating themselves over the head with these unrealistic expectations. I mean, it's obvious that we shouldn't have unrealistic expectations, but the question is, at what point do they become unrealistic? And that's something we've got to learn through trial and error in the practice. But it helps to focus not so much on your sense of who you are, whether you're a person who should accept yourself or a person who should be upset with yourself, but looking at your actions, looking at your intentions. The Buddha was so wise in teaching Rahula this, precisely this issue from the very beginning. Because your intentions are something you can know, if you really look carefully. There are so many other things in life that you can't know. But this is one thing you can know, and so you work on that. Work on developing your, your sense of right and wrong, your sense of what's appropriate what's not appropriate, your sense of what's skillful and not, by beginning with something you can know, something you can watch, in terms of the intention, and then what happens as a result of acting on that intention. I noticed when I was in Thailand, when I first went over there, television had not yet really come to the country. They did have TV stations, and a little village might have one TV set in the whole village, a little black and white screen, nothing all that impressive. And the program was very limited. Programming was very limited, just a few hours a day. And the kids I taught the university, seem to be very comfortable in their own skins. By the time I had left, everything had changed. TV was everywhere. Huge color TV sets. Cable had come. 24 hours a day. All kinds of programming. And young people were very dissatisfied with themselves. I think a lot of this issue of accepting or rejecting yourself comes from the mass media because they prey on our insecurities. Trying to make us feel that we lack this, lack that, so we will buy this or buy that. And so most people, when they come to the practice, come with this problem of self-image. 
which is why we get a lot of teachings on learning how to accept yourself and how you should realize that you're okay just as you are, which may be a good antidote for a while for people who have been ex overly hard on themselves. But it's not the answer. If that were the answer, then we would have heard that the Buddha left his palace, went off into the woods and came back realizing that he had been perfectly okay as he was when, the, when he was still living in the palace. There was no need for him to go off in the forest, no need to practice. I have yet to find that teaching anywhere. And it's important for the purpose of the practice that we do have a good, healthy self-image, good, healthy sense of ourselves. But we have to realize that that's not the, the issue. The issue is even if we do have a healthy sense of ourselves, we're still causing ourselves suffering. And that's not okay. But again, if you get tied up in the issue of who you are, your self-image, it really gets in the way of looking at your actions and looking at their results and having a dispassionate attitude towards them. Dispassion in the sense that you really want to learn what works and what doesn't work because it's going to make a big difference in your life. And though, though you would like your actions to work to get their desired results all the time, you have to be mature enough to realize that that's not always going to happen. There's room for learning. And so you want to know, if you act on this intention, what are the results? If you act on that intention, what are the results? Are they skillful or not, these intentions you've been acting on? If they're not, you can use your ingenuity to find some other way to act. You keep testing, testing, testing like this. Which requires confidence in your ability to learn. But it doesn't demand that you always make the right choice. You want to try, you want to work for it, but you have to admit that there are a lot of areas in life that you don't know. And so you don't berate yourself for not knowing the things you don't know. The areas where you can berate yourself are where you, you know better, and you still do the things you know you shouldn't be doing. So it's important to answer this question properly about how to negotiate the, between the two extremes of self-acceptance and self-rejection. It's by learning a healthy attitude towards learning, a healthy attitude towards looking at your actions and wanting to learn from them, shifting the issue from whether you are acceptable or not acceptable as a person and looking to the actions, looking at the intentions that come into the mind and that you feel inclined to act on. And over time, you start developing realistic standards for judging them. Because after all, there are a lot of people in the world right now who are very satisfied with themselves, they're very content with themselves, and they're creating a lot of, a lot of trouble in the world. So it's not an issue of learning to accept yourself or not accept yourself, but learning to be really objective about your actions and having that motivation to create as little suffering as possible. Learn how to cut away unskillful actions and unskillful ways of judging. And replace them with more skillful ones. Buddhism does have a should. It doesn't impose it on anybody, but basically says, if you really want to put an end to suffering, this is what you should do, because this is the way things are. This is the way things work. These are the actions, that, these are the intentions that give rise to good results. These are the intentions that give rise to unskillful results. This is the way it is. So you want to develop realistic standards for yourself, and at the same time learn how to keep the focus on judging the intention.
rather than judging your general grade as a person, because there is no such thing. No such thing as a grade for you. There are certain moments when you do things well, and certain moments when you don't do things so well. There are certain moments when you know what to say and do, and other moments when you don't know what to say and what to do. But the important thing is you try to maintain that intention, not to cause unnecessary suffering. And then you work at it to get more skillful at it. And look at your setbacks as opportunities to learn. I've told you that story about the national living treasure in Japan, the potter, one of my friends once studied with. She felt very upset that sometimes her pots would come out of the kiln looking fine, and other times they wouldn't. You know, they would be ruined by the fire. Either she'd done something wrong with the clay, or she'd made the fire too strong or too weak or whatever. Whereas a teacher always seemed to come out with perfect pots every day, every day, every day. Well, the difference between them was illustrated one day when she came to the studio and he'd he was in the kiln. Apparently that particular night's set of pots had not come out okay, and a lot of the pots had been ruined. And he was sitting there trying to figure out what had happened. Not getting upset, just realizing here was another opportunity to learn something he hadn't learned yet. Either because he was experimenting with something new, or something new had come into the that he hadn't anticipated. But either way, he was perfectly calm about the whole thing, accepting that setbacks are part of the path part of the skill, and taking it as an opportunity to learn. So if you have this healthy willingness to learn, and a healthy attitude toward your intentions, this is what gets you through. And it's not a question of accepting who you are or rejecting who you are, but really looking at your actions and seeing where they're causing trouble. This whole issue of who we are is such a big issue in life. The Buddha kept trying to get around it. People who measure themselves as better than others because of their race or because of their background, he kept pointing out that that's, that's not a valid source of judgment, a valid basis for judgment. Or people who tried to measure themselves as better than people because they either had the first John or the second John and those other people didn't have it. He said, that's the sign of a low person would use attainments like that to measure other people, or to exalt themselves and disparage others. It's equally stupid to disparage yourself. So the shift to, is away from what kind of person am I to what is the intention here, what happens when I, when I act on it. That's a useful question. That's a question that doesn't get you tied up in knots, and it really does help you learn. Because after all, that's what the whole path is all about, is learning. We start out with ignorance, we try to go to knowledge. And how do you get from ignorance to knowledge without learning? And the problem with ignorance is that it causes us to act in ways that are harmful. So it's the actions that are the issue here right now. So I always try to keep this point in mind, because it helps clear up a lot of the other difficulties that the mind creates for itself. So that we can start using the word should in the right way. We can start using our powers of judgment in the right way, in a judicious way. So that these powers of ours actually work to our advantage and not to our harm.